from the sunny shores of Singapore. Welcome to the GCN Show. Welcome to the GCN Show. This week we are talking about training. We think it might be the secret sauce to happy cycling yeah. and we've got four reasons why. We've also got news of cranks to make you pedal better, the new number one world's biggest bike brand, GCN being slightly less rubbish as we're phrasing, and the new Eddie Merckx, according to Eddie. Ooh. This week in the world of cycling, we learned the route of next year's women's Tour de France. Or Tour de France femme avec Zwift, to give it its full title. As well, we should actually, if Zwift are helping to bankroll it and actually make sure it happens. Uh, it's starting in Paris on the day the men finish, and then it's ending eight days later at the summit of Planche de Belleville. Yeah, can't wait. More on that a little later. Yeah, because we also learned this week that Paul James is a man of his word, <laughs> and so now has this giant tattoo of Mark Cavendish on his thigh. Mm. Well, apparently, he said that if Cav won a race this season, he'd get it done, and then Cav went and won 10, including four at the Tour, plus the green jersey. Yeah. I was wondering if anyone out there has actually got one of Dan Lloyd. No. We also learned this week that Pippo Pizzato, the flamboyant, outspoken Italian ex-pro roadie Pippo Pizzato, has just organised the first ever pro-only gravel race. Yeah, mm. strange, it but is. true. Um, it looked awesome though, as did, you got to say, Alexei Litsenko, who took the win. Not bad for his first time ever on a gravel bike. <laughs> yeah, not everyone takes it that easily, do they? No. Not ever. Ah, oh, he nailed it! Ah, what a legend. He is, he is a blooming good bike rider, isn't he? Fair play to him for making himself look like a chopper as often as he does. Yeah. So often. Yeah, now this week we are talking about training. Some of us like it, a few of us love it, a lot of people actually loathe it, but we're wondering if actually training might be crucial to a long and happy cycling life. Yeah, so we reckon that there are four reasons coming up that might make even the most committed cycling hedonist sit up and take note. Number one, short-term pain for long-term gain. We love cycling for the sake of cycling, but who wouldn't want to be able to go a little further or a little faster? Exactly. So what's to say you won't have more fun if you mm. go out for a ride and you could get up that killer climb that you've always had to avoid, or you could just go that little bit further. Yeah, legendary US Tour de France winner. The only US Tour de France winner even. Mm. Greg LeMond, of course. Um, once said, uh, it never gets easier, you just go faster. And while we know where he's coming from, it's not really true, is it? No, it's not. If you choose not to go faster, it does feel easier. Exactly. At least sometimes. Sometimes you then need to try hard again, or you'll end up back at square one. And training can, and get you faster, can open doors, can't it? It can, yes. Speaking of which, number two, training can give you a reason to get out of the mm. door, right? Because if you were just riding for enjoyment, yeah. you might quite reasonably think that you might actually enjoy a Netflix box set binge even more. Yeah, or watching me suffer on GCN Plus. Absolutely, yeah, mm. but actually, how many times have you not felt like going for a ride, but then when you have gone out anyway, you've come back totally buzzing? <laughs> yeah, a lot. Riding isn't not always the easiest choice, so having something else that might help you get out is that bit better, isn't it? That's right. The only exception to this, for people that don't train, but do log their miles. Yes, we you know there's plenty of you out there, but um, it's another thing entirely. It is. Yeah. Next, doing something you don't like can make what you do like feel even better. I'd argue that while I'm doing a cafe ride is absolutely great. It's even better when you've earned it. Well, yeah, but I think this is a tricky one, actually. Mm. Uh, we were talking about training on a GCN show a while ago, and the comments under it were really diverse. One thread stood out for me, though, with a comment at the top from Scott Burt, who said, I save pointless agony for work, not play. Yeah, which is totally true because cycling is the escape. You don't need to have a cafe ride to escape from cycling, surely? No. To which, though, Down to Earth replied, there's another reality here. Self-inflicted pointless agony makes work seem like it's play. Yeah. I'm not sure we're best placed to make that comment, though, are we? No, As our work and play kind of blur into one, doesn't it? Although, not always. Hey, mate. Ah, 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 ah. I wish you wouldn't show that one again. 
It's, it's almost getting embarrassing. Yeah, it is, right. Uh, now, the concept of rewards is a really strong one. It might be that riding itself is the reward from day-to-day -day life. I get that. I think a lot depends on how much time you've got available. Uh, I certainly don't have time to train and do cafe rides like I used to, so I prioritise the riding now and then I make my kids go to the coffee shop with me instead when I get back. Yeah. It's not quite the same, but you know. No, I totally get that though. Finally, just going out with the aim of enjoying yourself is quite a tough ask. Can every ride be pleasurable? No, 100% no. I mean, I love riding so much mm. that it's beyond an obsession, but I can't honestly tell you that I love every moment of every ride, which is why your enjoyment can be enriched when you play the long game. Give yourself some other means of enjoying a bike ride, like working towards a goal and then smashing it. Yeah, it's so satisfying, isn't it, to just hit those targets, whether that's PBs on Strava or an event you've got coming up. Or hang in there on a group ride. And for Ollie, it might be not getting dropped. Exactly, yeah. There's goals that you can reach and some goals that you can't, aren't there? But uh, no. Joking, and we're not all saying we're not all saying that you need to go out and get a coach huh. and rigidly follow a structured training plan, forsaking all enjoyment in pursuit of thirty-second intervals. But maybe think about doing a few hard efforts in your rides every now and then. Mm. Start thinking about some of your rides differently. It's not just tootle around. Yeah, got four climbs to do today. Why not go fast up all of them and then go easy between them? Yeah or try and set a new PB average speed over a long, nice hour ride. Yeah, exactly. Now, if this sounds like it's of interest, maybe the first step should be to set yourself a little goal and then work out how to get there. Yeah, let us know what you think in that comment section below. I'll be uh, well, really interested to know. That's right. Is training the secret source of cycling or are we just still hanging on to our slightly average cycling careers? We just can't let go. Yeah, sorry, mate. GCN Inspiration now, that part of the show where we handpick three of our favourite posts that you put up on, uh, on the GCN app this week, each of them winning a prize from third to first, kicking things off in third place, winning a GCN glass keep cup. James, who have we got? We got Alan from Talier, um, or Alan Talier. I think Talier is his, uh, his surname there, mate. Yeah, thanks for Alan of Talier. <laughs> <laughs> As winter approaches, don't let the weather get you down, I'm all for this. Riding outdoors is always more enjoyable than riding indoors, even the icy Chilton Hills are no match for the joys of cycling. Check out this Whoa. for a winter photo. That's pretty spectacular. That's very spectacular, isn't it? It looks pretty icy though. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I would not ride my road bike in those conditions these days, uh, because that looks really sketchy. Living life at the edge, do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. I wouldn't want to slip, slide and fall and impale myself on one of those ice schools. No, that. good point that. Um, I like the photo, Alan. I'm not entirely yeah. sure I agree with you that riding outdoors is always more enjoyable than riding indoors, but, uh, but there you go, that is a cool photo nevertheless. And inspiration, because we should keep riding our bikes, shouldn't we? Uh, right then, number two, or in second place, some might say, uh, we've got uh, Remo, Remco, hang on a minute, Remco Selly. Yeah, you nailed that. Early morning ride Sorry. with a great sunrise. <laughs> there we go. Wowzers. Now we're talking. <laughs> Sod your icicles. This is what <laughs> inspiration's all about. I'll tell you what, we are such suckers for, for, for golden light, are we? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, but isn't everyone? No, I 100% agree. It does everything, you know, it, it just makes everything look better, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's the just sunrise, beautiful. Um, so, Remco, congratulations. You've won yourself a GCN Pursuit Maroon t shirt uh, and a GCN Shadow Stand yep. original. But so those go. two are good, but they're not first place. In yeah. first place, winning the Cyclist Cookbook, our new one. Oh, yeah. Which is just fresh off the press. Yeah, plus, GCN Core Grey hoodie and a GCN mug, a red one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, is Jacques Lassil, 72. 240 kilometers south of Lima, Peru. Beautiful roads through the desert and have hosted Dakar race a few times. Oh my gosh, I love the Dakar race. Yeah. And yes, this is an e-bike, but they still burn 2,500 calories in less than three hours. So it just shows e-bikes you can get a good workout in. But look at that for a picture. Yeah. So that's I mean, one of those, you know, it just reminds me of like Roadrunner. Yeah, that's an amazing photograph. Yeah. 
I'd, I'd have to say, I think that wouldn't inspire me to go right there. Because it, it looks mildly, like it never ends. Yeah, it looks mildly terrifying and a little bit boring. But, yeah. um, but what a spot. That is super duper cool. And um, I, I also want to know, oh, is that a bottle that you, they, what is that? A bottle yeah. that they've, they've, they've like stood the bike up with? Oh. Where, where do you find one of those? Yeah, it does. I'm also I'm all always on shoots when I don't have a shadow stand at hand. I'm trying to find something to prop the bike up, but there I would struggle. Jacques, unfortunately, you didn't get a second prize this week, which was a shadow stand, which would have meant that yeah. you wouldn't have needed to bodge exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there we go. No, I like that. That is a super cool photograph. Mm. So, uh, so there we go. Three cracking photos this week. Um, well, two cracking photos. One really scary, wintry one that. Um, and one, ev- never-ending road. Yes, I like that. Yeah, like right. Uh, if you want to take part, then of course all you got to do is upload your inspirational photos to the GCN app, and each week we pick three pearlers. Yeah, and Ollie tries every week, and he never gets it. It's now time for cycling shorts. Cycling shorts now, and we're going to start with a bit of tech news. Road CC spotted a new patent granted for a chain set that promises to make the rider. 4% more efficient. Well, how? Springs in the crank axle to help you through that ominous dead spot that we all try to get over. Well, yeah, usually I'd say bollocks to this, uh, as everything that purports to reduce the dead spot that we've seen up to now has frankly failed mm. to prove its efficacy. Um, frankly, in fact, I think the dead spot is a bit of a myth, really, because unless you're going at 2k an hour, you've got inertia to help yeah. you through it, haven't you? Um, but still, the makers of this one, Huron, have a scientific paper on this that's been published in a peer-reviewed journal. So, we wait and see. Yeah, some cycling industry news now, which we actually spotted on cyclingindustry.news. Most of you won't ever have heard of the Durrell Group and Pond Holdings, but they are behemoth parent companies that between them own some of cycling's biggest brands. Now though, Canadian Durrell have agreed to sell their bike brands, including Cannondale to Pond for, get this side, $810 $810 million. Now the deal will theoretically make Pon the world's biggest bike business, unseating giants yep. to take the crown. Uh, does that mean anything for us lot as consumers? Probably not, no. no. But having Cervelo and Cannondale owned by the same company could be interesting. Could Cannon Vale or uh, Cannon Vale? No, Cannon Velo, Sir Dale, no, just coming to a store you? No, or not. No, okay. <laughs> there was a solid effort though from the GCN team this week in the Zwift Racing League round three at the Mercury Island. Oh yes, there was. Flat course. Yep. It's pretty deceiving um, in that uh, it was actually savaged from the gun and it split in the first of the intermediate sprints. GCN though, don't fear, was well represented up front. We decided not to sprint for the intermediates, preferring instead to put all our eggs in one basket. Uh, for the final sprint. In the end, Seras was fourth. I got ninth, yeah, in a sprint. Uh, Connor was 22nd, having attempted a, uh, a solo move with a K to go. A uh, stupid one at that, wasn't a it? A stupid solo move with a K to go, yes, yeah. quite frankly. But, um, you know, I, I don't know why he did that. Anyway, so Connor finished 22nd uh, and last out of the group, but not bad, because there were 80 odd starters. Yeah, it was all about the effort put in, wasn't it? It was, yeah. <laughs> a nice spin on it. Not really. Anyway, Justin Williams, the founder of Legion of LA, has announced a new style of criterion racing at the inaugural Into the Lion's Den in California this October. The event will have the biggest prize fund in US crit history with $100,000 up for grabs. Yeah, split evenly between the men and the women's, which I think is great. Absolutely, but the men's race won't be contested by the usual teams. Instead, the usual riders will represent cities like American football or baseball and therefore don special jerseys for the event. Yeah, if they look as cool as the Legions, I reckon they could sell a lot of that merch off the back of that too. I reckon they could. Mm. Uh, Now, we mentioned at the top of the show about the routes for the Tour de France, men's and women's. We talked about the women's. The men's race starts with three stages in Denmark, Mm. including a 13 kilometer time trial to kick it all off. Yeah, there will be cobbles on stage five and a return to outdoors as well. But there has been talk that the sprinters, well, there isn't money opportunities for them, is there? No, but Paul James doesn't care. He already has his Mark Cavendish tattoo. (laughs) Yeah, fair play, Paul. I think that's Mm. awesome. And next up, 
Could there be a new Eddie Merckx that eclipses Eddie Merckx's illustrious Palmares? Yeah, it's a question asked at least once a season, but Eddie himself has now been quoted in the Tubici, to Tubici. Uh, Tubici as saying that the young Slovenian superstar Tadej Pogacar can do better than him. What? Yeah. To be fair, Pogacar has started strongly enough. Uh, he's already won the Tour de France twice, of course, yeah. well before his 24th birthday. And it's not only Grand Tours that he's also won, uh, two monuments as well. And Eddie Merckx, let's put it this way, didn't win his first tour until he was 24 years old. So yes. he's got a head start. So are we going to see Pogacar dominating all the world's biggest races for the next few years? Let's just say, Sai, I wouldn't really count him out. No, I wouldn't at all. Uh, now, on a different note, uh, we've all heard about the tough, horrific things going on in mm. Afghanistan at the moment, but it seems like the UCI are also doing their bit to try and help the women's cycling community there to find freedom. So a group of 38 is the latest group that have been able to reach Switzerland where they can claim asylum. And they were met at the UCI cycling centre by none other than David Le Partian as well. Um, so the UCI and the Israeli NGO Israel has been working hard to try and safely bring members of the women's cycling movement in Afghanistan to Europe, basically, after the Taliban banned women's participation in sports and much more besides. Mm. So we hope that they are able to find freedom in a horrific time. Yeah. Lastly, we've been having a lot of fun with the Draw a Bike Facebook post we put up last week. A screenshot, the image, draw your own bike and upload it below. Some great many a crap, uh, but they are really great and I've had a lot of laughter over them. Yeah, go on, should we have a go? Have you done this yet, mate? I haven't, but uh, oh, let's just say my art is better than yours. You reckon? Yeah. Right. Bear with us. We're just going to draw Two bikes seconds. now. Uh, right. Hang on a minute. I'm going to make mine red. Mate, red bikes are faster, aren't they? So they say. Uh, I'm, I'm actually going to try and make my new bike. You mean Ronald McDonald bike? Something like that. Boom. Got it. Okay. <laughs> Why are you laughing? What is that? Right, there you go. You can be the judge. That's you Oh, that's actually pretty good. Bang. Mine looks like a 12 year old's joining it, not a three year old, more like. <laughs> it's now time for hack. Four, four, no, one more time, Sai. You did it wrong. We're still rolling. Come on. How's. Forward slash bodge. There we go. Smooth as a cucumber, mate. All right. Not my first rodeo. <laughs> Kicking things off with Gallery 167 is this intriguing looking front derailleur uh, called SRAM ESAP. Oh yeah, you know what's coming. Customer bought an S-Works Vengin for a service with this modification installed. I quickly twigged, twigged onto the fact that something was not quite right with the front mech. I'm not sure which branch of SRAM designed it, but apparently it worked a treat. Golden. Yeah, that is awesome. I tell you what, that is a mega... Uh, hack that one. Yeah. Roadside hack, if ever there was one. Um, yeah. And what luck that uh, a tree with such small twigs that are clearly quite strong. I was going to say that I thought that would just snap right off. Yeah. There we go. I like that. Um, hack from me. Forty-seven percent of you said it was a bodge. Um, I guess you know if you actually des like went out and rode it like that for weeks, it'd be a bodge. But to get you home. I would say that's a hack as oh, well. I think that's a hack, yeah. Mm -hmm. Next up, we have Taylor Prizer. Bespoke bike bags round two. Oh. So this came in a couple of weeks ago, I think, and uh, he's gone back after having made it onto the road on the GCN show but with some really great positive feedback from all you guys. Um, he actually kind of upped it a level. And uh, the product that he's come up with, I've got to say, is mind-blowing. That is super cool, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, because if I got my hands on a needle and thread in the material, mine wouldn't look anything like those bags. No. No, it would not, Chase. No. I'm not sure anyone thought that you would be able to knock yourselves up some bike packing bags. But um... oh, I was a bit big self-confident there. Wasn't <laughs> I? Yeah. No, I think that's great. Uh, that's a total hack from me. Total hack from me. Yeah, absolutely. Next up, we have Craig, don't we, Sai? We do indeed. Craig Ratcliffe 8. A wheelie bin bike trailer. Uh, I spotted this chap out for a ride with what looks like a piece of timber strapped to a wheelie bin. And I think, honestly, that you're right. That does look like a piece of timber strapped to a wheelie bin uh, being towed behind his Brompton. Is that to go shopping? I don't know. 
I mean, it's bizarre, but also kind of cool. Do you take your tennis balls in there? Does that work? I don't know. But um, does it help with balance? No, I mean, I'm guessing he's just using it for storage. Must be. Because Unless you, he's just going to the tip. Maybe he's going to do some recycling. You wouldn't put your kids in there, would you? I don't know, mate. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's a bodge for me. That. Yes. I think that's that. It's got to say that is a bodge. Um, unless you go into the recycling centre. And then it's good, isn't it? Yeah, then it really does work well. Um, now we've got another one in from Velt1121. And this I thought was quite cool. Drilled holes for internal cable routing. And I've got to say, taking on internal cable routing on your own is a fair effort. Well, is it a fair effort or is it, is it a little bit risky? Um, well, I would definitely say They it's said, risky. really want internal cable routing for my drop bars, so took a chance. I'm not sure your handlebars are where you really want to be taking chances. No. No. Let really... us know how you actually got on, because all I'm seeing is a picture of drilled holes. Wait. Oh, but uh, there might be some more. Yeah, there might be some more. I just haven't seen them. Well, I suppose what we're after is uh, if you've gone for a bike ride, hit a pothole, do your handlebars still exist in one piece? Or have you now got three? Yeah. Small bits of handlebars. Um, I think, generally speaking, we should probably not modify parts of our bike that have structural integrity. But, uh, you know, there's only a few, you know, contact points that we have and we don't want to risk with one That's with it. the handlebars. Good we? luck to you. 55% um, yeah. of you lot thought that was a bodge. Worryingly, 45% said hack. Um, so, uh, there we are. Yeah. Are we going to see a lot of drilled holes in handlebars? <laughs> we will wait and see. Next up, <laughs> we have one for Mr. T. Yeah, you do. Glucose monitor magnet mount. My mate is a diabetic and made his own magnetic glucose monitor mount carved out of wood with the magnets glued in. He can measure his glucose frequently as he cycles without having to stop. Now, I think this is great. That's super cool, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. What an awesome hack. Um, yeah, I like that very much. Why is it so tall? I mean, that'd be my I guess to, to, to make it closer. Possibly. I mean, Easier no, to see. That was, that was just a question, not a, not a criticism. Uh, but yeah, I like that very much. But I like that, how they're adapting the bike to suit their, their own needs. I totally. think this is good. Absolutely. Is that zip tie, though? It is, because zip ties uh, work so well. It's a bodge. Zip ties, mate, you can't distinguish it. I literally use them for anything. You can use them, as we know, for... I rest my case. Yeah, I'm a bodge, aren't I, mate? <laughs> Should we try the next one? Uh, well, actually, the next one is a, simply a reply to last week's uh, fish tank... Uh, what was it? A fish tank aerator that someone had turned into an ultrasonic cleaner. Yeah, Dan and I <laughs> didn't know how ultrasonic cleaners <laughs> worked, but fortunately, Simon Dowsett has filled us in. Ultrasonic cleaners, Hank, work yep. by creating lots of tiny bubbles it's the bubbles collapsing that clean. Okay. Fewer, larger bubbles, such as from a fish aerator, though much less efficient, can still work. And that's efficient, not efficient. That's actually quite interesting. It, yeah, well, I didn't actually know how that would yeah. work. And the fish pun's great. Yeah. I did that in, so, freestyle. So, uh, yeah, of course you did. Yeah, uh, right, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> sorry, it's just, Fish puns are probably the best puns you can get, I think, aren't they? Um, second only to tree puns. Yeah. Uh, right then. Just hold it together, mate. Should we leave it there? Yeah. That's it for Hack or Bodge this yeah. week. Uh, if you want to get involved, of course, upload your hacks and bodges to the GCN app. And if you haven't got any to upload yourself, we'll just go through and uh, enjoy the reams and reams of amazing posts already on there. Caption competition time now, that part of the show where you get a chance to get your hands on a coveted GCN Elite water bottle. All you've got to mm. do is put a witty caption in the comment section down below that relates to a photo we're about to give you. Results time first, though. Last week's post was this one. James, who is the lucky winner? It's a cra absolutely cracking photo and an unbelievable race at that. But What's Wasabi it? did come up with an unbelievable caption. Sonny has just cemented the win. Nice. That is so good. Yeah, we had so many great uh, captions actually last week. We've also, we'd like to do an honourable mention. Lata, you came close. Unfortunately, it was not to be. You will not get one of these sent through the post. But can we read it out anyway? Yes, good. 100%. Um, put him in the shower so we can see who won Paris Bay. It's so true, isn't it? It they was. all absolutely covered in mud. But weirdly, their backs were not. 
That was what. Like, it was normally strange. You get, normally you get a money back when you're riding in the mud. But anyway, amazing. But I could, I literally watched the race. I couldn't tell which riders were which. No. Fantastic, it? Apart from Matthew Vanderpool's amazing self-cleaning overshoes. <laughs> yeah, you could always true. tell him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right then, this photo is your caption photo for this week. Mm. Uh, that's Tade Pogaccia riding through a wall of fans. Literally riding through a wall of fans. Mm. Do you want to start us off, mate? Don't start us off, should I say? Oh, okay. Uh, Dan's not here, so you've got a lot to live up to. Uh, Come on, mate. You can do it. Tade Pogac uh, took a wrong turn and ended up on the annual ball running of Bergamo. Yeah, not bad. Do you see, do you see what I was going with there? Yeah. I mean, technically, it's just the flag. flag yeah. yeah. No, I liked that. I don't think it's quite good enough to win a juicy on water bottle. No. And I'm sure you guys can do an awful lot better. So yeah. make sure you put your caption in that comment section below. And um, while well, you get yourself an elite water bottle yeah. winging its way to you. So that wasn't the best, was it? Next time. We have had some unbelievable, I would say, films this week, and you guys have been leaving some even better comments, and I'm gonna kick off with a few under the GCN show. This one comes in from Mark. Got it, sorry, hang, we got an errant GCN bottle. Yeah, it's just flying around, isn't oh, it? Oh my word. <laughs> Now this one came under the GCN show, Marcus, with magpies are not that bad compared to drop bears. Oh, don't mention the drop bears. Drop bears. Yeah, Australia is a scary place, mate. Yeah. Um, no, there are a few scary stories about magpies that were dotting around under the show, and uh, somebody, it was terrifying. Someone when I saw even, that photo. Someone took to Instagram to tell me an even worse one. I won't share it with you now, but um, crikey, it was horrible. Oh, anyway, well, stay I safe. Want, I don't want to know now. No, honestly, I'll tell you later. It was really horrible. Uh, right <laughs> then, um, Stoff Doggy, by the way, um, filled us in on. Um, Billy No Mates. Yeah. Uh, in Australia, they call it uh, the Scott No Mates, often shortened to Scotty. <laughs> he's, he's a right Scotty. He's got no mates. Brilliant, brilliant. Fantastic. Right, another one from Justin. Outrageous that GCN at it again, trying to make pointless tandems look cool in a shallow attempt to make me spend more money on bikes, also to get a friend. <laughs> that is fluid genius. Yeah, I've got to hate Justin. tandems. Yeah. I mean, if that made you oh. want to go and buy a tandem, fair play to yeah, you. Yeah, I was going to say, um, literally, I, I, I tried my hardest to put you off them. We've got another tandem vid coming up there, haven't we, James? Have we? Many more, in fact, yeah. Oh. Did you not get the memo? No, you haven't put that in my week commencing. <laughs> <laughs> right then. Uh, now, uh, I don't know whether you've seen uh, James and Connor's fantastic video about basically oh, a dream man. ride in Mallorca. Um, it was a genuinely dream ride. Though, it looked so it amazing, insane, yeah. yeah. Um, Nicholas uh, Olguin said, uh, where is this Mallorca that you were talking about? Yeah, that was um, Connor's pronunciation, I think. Not mine. Yeah. And Tusk on that same video put, a Connor is never late. Bilbo Hankins, he arrives exactly what you <laughs> Uh, Lord of the Ring fans, you'll like oh, that one. I'm Connor not going to live late. Down. Bilbo Hankins, he arrived exactly when he needs to. Right, uh, interestingly, under that video, there was there was um, there was a thread going on, started by Laura Rory, uh, who said, um, "Interest uh, investing in crypto now should be in every wise individual's life plan. In some months' time, you'll be ecstatic with the decision you made today." Which which I thought, hmm, interesting. Uh, <laughs> Maria then replied with most intelligent words I've heard. Yeah. Finally, Amaya Dominguez said, I agree with that totally. Crypto is the new gold. <laughs> so uh, there you go. Thank you very much to you three. I, um, <laughs> I find it funny how watching a video about Mallorca um, made you write about cryptocurrency. It just shows how but, um, limited intelligent Connor and I are because well, we that's kept, you got crypto from our epic ride video. Mm. To be fair, actually, that lot I think have been commenting under every single GCN video. So, um, darn it. Yeah, they just, they just, they just really like GCN crypto. videos. I think. And crypto, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and uh, another video that I thought was a bit of a standout was uh, Connor taking on seventy-two hours, of which he didn't get that far, but no, he, he, got, didn't get he, that far. He, he got far <laughs> enough. And uh, a lot of comments under there supporting Connor going out of his comfort zone. But one that I thought was really quite good was the Bactoids from Bactoids. Uh, GCN should release a flannel with their logo on it for the bike packers. And I actually mm. would agree because I remember when we do bike packing, we're always looking around for bike packing-esque gear. So I think that's flannel should, shirt. that should be, yeah, something we should put in. I like that, yeah. Maybe even little jean shorts like you were wearing. Should we just insert a clip? Whoa, it's breezy. 
Oh, oh. I'm not sure we need to see that again. Oh, yeah, that was that. Whose shorts were they? Manon's. Oh, right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They're re really high waisted. Yeah. I'm not sure that was the most comfortable, but no. uh, anyway, also, it makes you feel a bit cold looking at that. Um, <laughs> Rock's World said uh, Connor looks like the world's biggest gnome. Yeah. yeah, that's true, actually. If you, if you, he was also managed to get a cup that says, the man, the myth, the cycling legend. I'm not sure. Does he really think he's a cycling <laughs> legend? Uh, that's Ollie's cup, isn't it? Oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I went put it past him. <laughs> uh, right, anyway, yeah, loads of other comments mm. saying how well uh, Connor had done there. So, uh, no pun intended. Um, right then, should we get on to what's coming up yes. on GCN this I week? Think, I think we should. Yeah, Wednesday. Best things about cheap bikes, plus more from Bespoke on Tech. And Thursday, it's the Tech Show. Friday, Freddie on his Wahoo system. Part that's right. Two. That's uh, he's not a zero, but he's on his way to being a hero, mm. nevertheless. Mm. Uh, it's getting close to crunch time for Freddie, actually. The Mallorca three one two beckons. Yeah, it is. Uh, <laughs> then we've got Saturday. Hank did a recumbent race, didn't mm. you, mate? Yeah, I'm just going to put this clip in now because. Um, I did fall off on the finish, on the start line. All right, here he goes, push off. Without crashing into people. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry, team. Oh, yeah. That's a bit embarrassing, isn't it? Yeah, and I also didn't have any brakes for one race. Oh, that really? was quite interesting. So it's worth, it's worth watching. <laughs> it's definitely worth watching. Fantastic. All right, can't wait to see that. And then Sunday, Alex, uh, well, basically hit the jackpot. He got to go and ride the Gravel Tour of Flanders, the inaugural mm. Gravel Tour of Flanders that was organised by the Tour of Flanders organisers. So uh, we've got that video for you on Sunday as well. So, uh, so yeah, that's super cool. And then over on uh, GCN Plus, of course, um, the uh, we've got a wicked film dropping for you this week, actually. Part one and part two of uh, the sports director. So um, Basically, how hard is it to win a bike race? We took World Tour Sports Director Tom Southern, who works for EF Education Nippo, and gave him a team of rank amateurs and told him to go and win a bike race. And this is the story of their journey, mm. which uh, which is super cool. Um, I'm really proud of it, actually. Uh, I think, uh, well, yeah, give it a watch. Let us know what you think. Be very interested uh, to hear your thoughts. Yeah, and that's it for the GCN Show this week. I've thoroughly enjoyed joining you on your left side. And, Me too, um, mate. I look forward to the next time I get invited. Hopefully Absolutely. it won't be as long as last time. No, just, uh, sorry, one last thing. We haven't finished. We've got so many, so many bits of news. Um, make sure you check out the Zwift Racing League live on mm. Mondays. Uh, we are broadcasting the pros uh, on Monday night over on GCN Racing, so do not miss that one. See you next week.